get in the rooms before we start. So okay. that's our new strategy. <laughs> so, and this chair keeps sinking. So I eventually like at the end of the YouTube, <laughs> at the end of the video, my, my head will be, uh, you know, yes. how do you say it? On the, on the table. You know, I'll be looking at you from like. Just kind of like gradually sink lower and lower throughout the, yeah. throughout the webinar. I keep having to lift it up, but hopefully. <laughs> so how are you doing? Good? I'm good. Yeah, yeah I'm good. Um, I've had a lot of like positive changes and experiences. Yes, yeah, since we, just since we last spoke. Yeah, yeah, a lot of awesome stuff. I mean, the channeling's expanded like tenfold, you know, since we last spoke. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And like a, a lot of like developments in like my personal like life, sense of self and everything. Um, so a lot of really nice changes. I've been been riding, riding the Lionsgate wave and, and happy, very happy. Yeah. Process. That starts 8-8, eight, eight, right? That's 8-8. Eight, eight. It's 8-8, eight, eight, yeah. And I've been seeing posts where people are saying there's like a buildup energy that's like working mm -hmm. towards it. And it goes from... I think it was like the galactic new year like last friday until like i think the 12th or the 11th like it's energies are like very active today is the last day of mercury retrograde or it's gone direct today on the okay. i think today's the last day but this last week <sighs> yeah, yeah. So, much, so much tension with people oh my god I've been like, normally I'm a hermit. I don't leave my house other than walk dogs. And <laughs> I'm very much like, so I kind of had skipped a lot of that energy, but oh, it, it got me this week. So I talked to a friend of mine and I was like, what's up with Mercury retrograde? He's like, just stay inside and watch TV and eat ice cream and just let it pass, you know? Right, right. Oh, that's so, that's so, that's such a fun way to go about it. It's like, use it as like, uh, like, time. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So like I've been wanting to buy some plane tickets, but I'm waiting until I can do it tomorrow. Mm. Where, are you, where are you thinking of going? Oh, I'm, well, I'm, I've got a couple trips going. I'm thinking of going to Bali in, in oh. October, but um, I don't know, but definitely the U S in December and then in India in February. Yeah. Awesome. Where in the U.S. do you think you'll go? Well, I go to Charleston, South Carolina. That's where I'm from. Okay. So I go to my family. So I'll be there for a month. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to go for less than that amount of time, you know. Yeah. So. The tickets, be, like, the tickets can be upwards of like a grand, right? Like to fly round trip. Well, I save my miles every all the time and I always use my miles to go home and then my mom saves miles. So I say I pay for the ticket going over or coming back and she does she does one leg, I do the other and then normally it ends up costing me like, you know, a hundred bucks and stuff like that. So it's oh, worth wow. it. That's awesome. Well you save your miles. So I use my credit card to pay for everything so I can get my miles. Right. Mm -hmm. That's smart. Why get a credit card? <laughs> yeah, well, just for that. I mean, that's the best. That's the best reason. And my mom pays her mortgage on a credit card, and then just pays her credit card every month. You know, but she gets a significant amount of money of miles, and it adds up quick. So, I've gotten six tickets, six tickets with my miles so far. So. Oh, you guys, I'm going to let um, Alex in, and it's his birthday today, so. Oh, awesome. Let's see. Can we give him a chorus? No, I'm just going to say. <laughs> is, there, is there anybody in the, in the YouTube yet? I'm trying to see if, I know we're live, but I, I don't see anybody there yet. Hi, everybody. Happy so birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> we can sing to you, but it will be really, really out of uh, <laughs> timing. It might be like people shouting happy birthday at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of alignment. Yeah. So we've got 10 people watching. So maybe we should start. Hi, everyone in the YouTube. We're just getting started and... 
as per our new way of doing it, we're opening the room up before we get going. So <clears throat> uh, uh, Lily Pez says, happy birthday, Alex, in the chat. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, she said. Hey, Heather. So, okay, um, Heather and Lily Pad, hi. Christine, wait, I gotta let Christine in the room. This is such a weird kind of system. It's like, knock, 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 let me in, let me in. So, so um, Tyler, why don't we start? I'll start and then we'll just start. Do you know what I mean? Okay. All right, so. Hello everyone and welcome. This is Karen Newman. This is the Saturday Human Colony Hucolo webinar. It is August the 3rd, end of Mercury Retrograde, thank God, 2020. <laughs> That's the official title of the day. So welcome. Uh, today we have back by popular demand. He was very requested immediately after the last webinar. Um, we have Tyler Ellison. Hi, Tyler. How are you? Good, good. Happy to be back. Happy to be here with you. Great. I'm going to just put it on this kind of view so everyone can see who's in the room. Today we have Don, we have Jana Hopman, who's channeled with us before, a nice good friend of mine from the Netherlands. We have Christine, Ava, Alex, who you can see uh, for the people who are not, don't have their cameras on, you can't see them. But there's a good group of people here. We've got a nice group of people in YouTube. So I just want to... Um, what I want to do is I'm going to set this so we're, we're focused on you. There we go. So Tyler, since the last time you were here, you were telling us about how all the changes you've been through. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Is he there? Is he frozen? He's frozen. Is he frozen? Hi, Alex. Okay, he's frozen. We'll wait for him to come back. <laughs> there, you're back. Okay, perfect. Oh, now you're muted. My, my connection will do that sometimes. It's just, I think the house I moved has like lead paint. So every now and then I'll blip out for like a minute, but it only happens maybe once every like hour. So it shouldn't be too much of an inconvenience. Okay, well, if you blip out, just, so tell us, so you, what I was saying is like, you've gone through like a lot of changes since the last time we've talked, because you had just started channeling really when you came on and channeled for the first time. So tell us yeah. what's happening and, and what you're, which, what's happening with your channeling now. Sure, sure. So, um, so I've been channeling since 2015 and um, it had oh, been- Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, I've, I've been going since 2015. Okay. But, uh, but I had like let go of it for a little bit because I kind of had like a, a famous like spiritual teacher rip me a new one <laughs> about my channeling. And I was like, uh, it made me like wary of it. Um, not in like a negative way of it being something bad, but in like, uh, can I actually do this kind of way? And so I, I, I'm very surprised, but I ended up taking like probably like three to six months off of it, you know, directly channeling. And then someone had found one of my YouTube videos and they were like, dude, this is amazing. Like, please more. And when I saw someone who wasn't. Flipping out again. Darn lead paint. Damn lead paint. <laughs> Damn the lead paint, all the lead paints. <laughs> They'll be back. So Yana, did anyone ever, like, I know when I first started channeling, I took a few months off when I first channeled. I think that a lot, that's very common. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that true for you too? Well, no, for me, it was a, was a steady, steady build because I, I slowly uh, gone into it. And then, uh, okay. but when I, I now, for, now, for instance, now when I have my two months off, I, I noticed that I don't channel that much because yeah. it's, Really, because it's, it's like I do it in the courses, I do it when in the sessions, I do it for people, and for yeah. I'm I'm on a, I'm in a show or something. But uh, so now I'm just it's it's sort of part of work. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Okay, Tyler, you're back. Thank you. I'm back. I think I have a housemate using my Wi-Fi, so I think I have to be like, hey, could you lay off for like two hours? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go see if I can ask him to do that if he doesn't okay, mind. No yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Well, back to Yana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, 
I, I it's it's also um, I can imagine that that some, that uh, uh, you you meet uh, new guides on the way. So first, yeah. first it was Elia that that came through, and when then the Arcturians, and between that there was a little pause, like right? Sort of a jump, a, a shift in in, in, in consciousness. Okay. Cool. So he's sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry, Yana. No. Okay. No. Go ahead. I'm just a filler. Okay. Yeah. So he was using the Wi-Fi. So I'm having him turn it off. I didn't think it made that much of a difference, but uh, apparently it does. At least with at least with Zoom, Skype it seems to be okay. Zoom, I think it's a little more data heavy. Um. So anyway. Yeah. Start over. So you. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yes. Yeah, so so I had taken like a break from from channeling because I had a spiritual like guru type person ripped me a new one. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. So back to Yana. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is so cute. Cute. I'm on the show today. Well, this is the last of Mercury retrograde, so it's so expected. How are you doing there, Tyler? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, let's skip the part about the ripping the new one. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't be bringing that up. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Um, so what but, happened then? But, um, but yes, yeah, so some of the changes I've been going through um, in myself have been through like the, the meditation practice I do. Like I do advanced uh, Taoist meditations. Um, right. And it's, it's all about merging body consciousness. Like the, for example, the heart and the kidneys and the liver with different universal elements. So you first do it with earth elements. So heart with fire, kidneys with water. Eventually you expand that into solar systems. So you fuse the heart with Mars, the kidneys with Mercury, and then you move up to stars. Mm -hmm. So you do like all the stars to like the Southern region, all the stars to the Northern region for the different organs. And um, I remember getting to this point in my practice where I was like really unplugging from the, from the matrix, you know, like from this practice, it was really just raising the vibration. I felt like I was in a really positive way, like beginning to move away from a lot of collective negativity. And, but I still felt like plugged into it. I was like, man, I'm still feeling the density, the high, the high dense energy of my city that I'm in. I'm like, I still feel this in like my field. And I'm like, what's like, why is this? And my guides came through and they were like, it's because you identify as human. They were like, when you buy into the human narrative, which is like a narrative that like science gives us, religion gives us. They were like, when you buy into that, you get plugged into the human collective consciousness. They were like, you're not really human. Like no one's really human. You're essentially a compilation of like forces. You know, human is an idea, but like what you are is much bigger than that. So I, I started to realize like, whoa, like I have from all that practice, the meditation practice, I was like, I have the fire of creation in my heart. I have the water of life in my kidneys and so on. Like I was like, these forces are alive in me. The planets are in me because the practice is like drawing in their energy. The galaxies are alive in me. And very quickly, um, I had like an ego death. Uh, where I was like, I'm actually not like human. That's like not accurate. That narrative isn't, isn't true. What I am is like the stars. What I am is like the forces of nature, like playing dress up as a person. And I was like, oh my God. And as soon as like I had that realization, um, that like feeling of collective negativity, like was just gone. Like I totally unplugged from it. Um, and it was, it was a very powerful realization and I've, I've had a few other ones, you know, since then that have also been very uh, expanding that I can share upon. But that was like one of the most uh, powerful ones. Oh, that's cool. There's a um, very uh, nice quote. It's a proverb and it says, be humble for you are made of earth. Be noble for you are made of stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, that's yeah. Beautiful. So... So you your channeling is expanded because of that. I would I would think is that correct? Yeah, yeah exactly. It really it really has. Um, I mean, a lot of the ways I think it's expanded is I mean these these ETs that I channel because that's mainly what I channel is like ET consciousness. I mean, I, I can tap into other consciousnesses like like um, like shamanic plant consciousness and whatnot. 
but ET is where I really gravitate because I think I have a lot of incarnations in those kind of dimensions. Mm -hmm. And I found that like through recognizing that like that galactic star energy is like part of my makeup and then, you know, putting your awareness on what that feels like, it definitely uh, expanded the ability to channel because I realized it's just me talking to my like galactic self. You know what I mean? It made less of a gap present. It made it much more like in the body, much more like just another layer of myself that I'm amplifying when I'm channeling. Yeah, well, that's what happens. I mean, we're multifaceted and we're multidimensional and we're, we exist in the past, present and future of what we consider time. And, you know, we're very infinite. So the more you can identify and have more realization of that, then, then the, the broader your awareness comes, the broader your consciousness comes and the more. They agree. <laughs> They're like, that's true. <laughs> Archie, be quiet. Oh, God. I tell you, this is like a, a comic show. Whoa. It's not my dog. It's a dog that's staying with me. Oh. Okay. What's up, boy? You're so cute. <laughs> He's all up in arms about something. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> like, I, saw, I saw the mailman. He yeah. was here. He's real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So there, see, that's him in the background walking by. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I love dogs. <laughs> so, so you ch are you because before you were channeling the Asasani, are you still channeling Asasani or? I still am. I still am. I've, I've moved into more of like that kind of universe. Like I've started channeling um, beings that are called Yael, which are part of that same lineage of like hybrid like humans essentially. Mm -hmm. um, since then, I mean, I still, I still channel Pleiadians. Like that's a consciousness I can tap into very quickly. Um, it was like the first group I channeled, began channeling with in 2015. So I still can channel other consciousnesses, but I find that this like lineage of beings, they are the ones I feel like most inspired, most excited by to channel. Um, mm -hmm. I love the other ones. Like they all bring in very diverse, very like relevant information. But I find like the the Sasani energy, the Sasani energy, and the the Yael, which is a newer one for me, have been very fascinating. The Yael in particular, they're very like dreamy, very dreamy, very human vibe, um, and like very poetic. Like I feel like when I channel them, uh, it's a little it's interesting because it's when I channel the Sasani, my voice will like change. It'll sound more like Bashar or Ilan. Um, it'll it'll just very naturally go into that. When I channel the Yael, um, it sounds like me. It sounds like me, but with more clarity. Um, so I think that that's also symbolizing like the humanity of this like particular hybrid race. Um, so, so that's um, yeah, that's that's uh, some of the I would say the where I'm focusing my attention these days. Yeah, and so for you now, I mean, what is what is? Do you have like a primary message? Like I know when I channel, I have a there's a theme that my guides are really on most of the time but do you have like a theme or is it kind of like everything what's happening in the world what is there what are yeah, they talking about so each uh transmission they do will be like unique like they'll have some where they have pretty much like a whole mini monologue and like lecture designed and mm -hmm. i don't really know about it until i'm channeling it um so they'll, they'll oftentimes have like core teachings that are like unique to each transmission uh, they're, I mean, they're, they're root though, right? Like they're like, they're. La, 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 <laughs> la, 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 Maybe uh, if he have uh, internet on the mobile, he can make it like a hotspot and connect the computer. Yeah, that's a good idea. Tyler. Yes. Do you have internet? Can you make a hotspot for your computer? And maybe you won't be at the... From no, my, no mobile phone. If you have internet from... Yeah, that's what I mean. Make a mobile uh, phone and use your mobile phone and make a hotspot for your computer. Yeah, let me see. That's what I'm looking into right now. That way you're not at the subject of uh, your roommate. Uh... Yeah, well, I think that it... Um, horrible Wi-Fi hotspot. Let's check. Um, here we go. I have Xfinity. Here's Xfinity hotspots. We're going to do this. We're, 
I was like, yeah, when I saw your message, Alex, to do the hotspot thing, I was like, that's a really good idea. And now we're doing it. It's real. Okay, so. One second. All right. Hey, Anna. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just like to say it. So actually, while, we're, while, we're, while you're doing that, I'll just, because we didn't really, I didn't do any announcements, but next week is the Ascension Workshop in Rochester, New York. Um, there is still time to sign up if you want, but it's the 8th through the 10th, and it will be in Rochester, New York, and you can sign up for it on the website, hucolo.org, and Jim will be there, excuse me, channeling and teaching all kinds of classes, he and Angela. So if you feel called, there's still time to do it, but they're going to be doing a uh, they're going to be doing a broadcast from there next week Saturday at the same bat time, same bat channel. So that should be really fun with all the people at the workshop. So make sure to tune in for that. On Fridays, are they still having the channeling class done or not? Yes, right. Yeah, on Fridays, we have a channeling class for anybody who is a beginning channeler or is liking to learn to channel. It's completely free. And you can go on Facebook to Hucolo Channeling Group, ask to join, and you'll receive the invites to the channeling uh, class. It's every Friday. It's more like a workshop where everyone takes turns channeling, talks about it, how, you know, their methods, how they got started, and, and encourages everybody to learn to channel. So if you feel inspired to learn to channel, if you want to just check it out, please go to the Hukolo Channeling Group on Facebook. Again, free to join. And then also for people who would like to support Hukolo and become a Hukolo Club member, you are very welcome. It helps us pay for our Zoom room, pay for our uh, YouTube, all the things that we support and, and have all these paid subscriptions that we have. Um, you can help us with the website, that kind of thing. So <clears throat> you can also go to hucolo.org forward slash webinars. And for $10 a month, you get four channelings that you can attend, ask as many questions as there is time for. That's an amazing offer for that amount of money. And it really does help us. We are a not-for-profit. We barely scrape by organization. <laughs> so everybody who helps us you are so very uh you were so very thank we're so very thankful for the continued support so tyler are you back i'm back and i hooked up to, yes i hooked up ha, in multiple ways and i hooked up to a mobile hotspot awesome. so i think i think the connection will be better so let's give it a go Good. and yeah fingers crossed because um yeah i'd love to not have to and my not feet crossed underneath the table you can't see it but it's happening one more time. I said my feet are crossed under the table, but they're it's Thank happening. you. Thank yeah. you for that. <laughs> Crucial. So, um, so why don't we so so you're now channeling uh the Yayel primarily. Well, uh, well well primarily um the Sasani. Oh, Sasani but I think, sorry. Expanding into the Yayel. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. So I thought we could start because you do this wonderful meditation. Maybe we could start with a little meditation with everybody. And then if you want to go right into the channeling, we could do that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. do you use the meditation to get into your channeling anyway or? Yeah, yeah. So that that framework, which is all like the Taoist like meditation, that's like the framework I've used to like support the channeling. So it's, okay. so yeah, maybe, it's, oh, sorry. Oh, it's like the beginning. It's essentially the beginning steps for like expanding into a, a way you can start to channel. So if you can, so that, you know, people know, why don't you just leave the meditation and then at some moment just indicate that you're going to now go deeper and we will wait for you to come oh, through with your guides. And everything. Yeah, that, oh, that sounds great. This will be a really good way to like all go in like very deep to this okay. all together. So this right. is really fun. Okay, sorry. Um, I just want to tell you, thank you for being here and we really look forward to your channeling. And there's a helicopter going over my house, so. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> They're trying to get the bird's eye view of the conversation. Like, this is good. All right. Perfect. Okay. All right. Myself and I'll let yeah. you take it away. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. It's it's great to be here. I love I love being part of these events. So thank you. Thank you. So so for this meditation, um, you can sit in whatever posture is most comfortable for you. 
you can have, um, you know, you can be in the yogic postures of half lotus or whatever is cozy, or you can do the more traditional way that this meditation is done, which is just where you have the feet um, planted on the ground, the balls of the feet touching the earth. And we want to become aware of, I'll give you all a second to get into a cozy position. And we want to become aware of the left eye and the right eye. So left, right eye awareness. Bring the tip of the tongue to the roof of the mouth, about an inch behind the front teeth. And imagine in front of you uh, something that represents love, unconditional love, appreciation, joy. It could be a loved one. It could be a pet. It could be a dream, anything at all that represents appreciation, joy. And allow for yourself to feel that internal love and joy and appreciation that this imagery inspires. This meditation is called the inner smile meditation. Um, it works best. You don't have to, but I always encourage it. If you can force like the cheesiest, most silly smile on your face during the meditation, it'll amplify the power of the meditation. So the idea is we're going to become aware of this internal state of love, a sense of inner smiling and expanding that into a sense of outward external smiling. So just grinning like you are having a psychedelic experience, whatever it is, mystical experience, big smile. And we have the left right eye awareness, becoming aware of the brain, inwardly gazing at the brain, feeling all that love, all that appreciation in the brain. And as you inhale through the nose, imagine the air is vortexing, it's spiraling through the nostrils into the brain. And filling the brain with love, all the neural pathways, the frontal lobe, the top of the brain, center of the brain, back of the brain, doing all of this energy, all this inner smile going into the brain. Left and right eye awareness gazing downward into the heart. An unconditional love, inner smile into the heart, spiraling the inhalations to the heart, opening the heart center. And then left and right eye awareness to the belly, going down to the belly center, the lower dantian, the intestinal mind, a storehouse of energy, feeling the center open up, the kundalini, the earth energy is all linked to the center. Feeling your kundalini awaken, open. Hmm. We're now going to bring the inner smile back up to the heart center. Seeing red light in the heart. Seeing this red light expanding to the aura. Unconditional love, joy, passion in the heart. We now bring the left right eye awareness from the heart downwards to the stomach, right below the heart, and to the spleen, which is to the left of the stomach. So right under the left breast, behind the left ribs, one light, earth element growing here. Seeing yellow light in the spleen stomach, yellow light expanding into the aura. We have unconditional love in the spleen, stomach, trust in the spleen and stomach, stability and balance in the spleen, stomach, fusing with the yellow light. Left, right eye awareness, moving to the lungs. We see bright white light in the lungs. White light getting brighter and expanding into the aura, feeling the unconditional love and the inner smile in the lungs and aura, feeling feelings of love and courage, feeling your natural courage, feeling your natural strength and your sustainability in your energy and your direction. And smiling to the white light of the lungs Left and right eye awareness, inner smile awareness to the kidneys, which are level with the navel in the back. 
right by the lumbar spine, low back. We see blue light in the kidneys. Kidneys in this system are the root of yin and yang. They're the bank account of our vitality. Spending a little extra attention in the kidneys. The sexual organs, the kundalini is linked to the kidneys. Feeling your natural kundalini, your natural sexual vitality in the blue light of the kidneys, the unconditional love in the blue light. The element of the kidneys is water. Becoming aware of the gentleness of water, the calmness of water, and the peace of water. And seeing this blue light and vitality growing and expanding into the aura, blue aura, blue kidneys. And feeling your breath strengthening this blue light kidney connection. Every time you breathe, Allow for the blue light to become stronger and the vitality to grow stronger. Inner smiling, feeling the love and joy in the kidneys. We bring all this awareness now to the liver, which is located under the right breast behind the right ribs. Liver is the forest element, the wood element seeing the green light of nature here in the liver. Seeing trees, tree consciousness in the liver. Seeing the green light of the trees growing bright in the liver and then growing bright in the aura. The elemental virtues of the liver are generosity and kindness. Feeling your natural kindness natural generosity and unconditional love growing in the liver, mirroring the quality of the trees. For the tree's kindness is reflected by their production of oxygen and their bearing of fruit they make for all beings. Seeing that generosity and kindness of the nature elements, the nature spirits of the trees growing brightly in the liver. We're now going to bring our attention to the belly. Begin to place your hands over your belly button as we gather in all of this energy. So hands over the navel. For men, traditionally right hand goes on the navel, left on top. For women, it's traditionally done reversed, left hand on the navel, right hand on top, but do whatever you feel comfortable with. And we feel the energy from the palms beaming into the center of the belly, becoming aware of all of that organ energy we've generated, bringing all of that with our gentle, effortless awareness into the navel, into the navel energy center. We're going to do three rounds of what's called the microcosmic orbit. This is a technique to circulate all of this energy we've generated up the meridians, the most powerful meridians that we have access to in the body called the Ren and Du. The Du is where the Kundalini goes. It goes up the spine. The Ren goes down the front, from the top of the head, down the front to the genitals, and then it loops. So I'm going to guide us through this. So allow for yourself to stay in the relaxed state, feeling the navel awareness. Begin to form all of this energy into a ball of energy within your belly, seeing this energy condensing into a ball. While the ball is in the belly, allow for it to stay in place and to begin to spiral up the spine while remaining in the navel and then down the front. So it's just rotating in place in the belly center allowing for it to spiral up the back and down the front in the belly, like a spiraling ball. Allow for this now to go directly down to the perineum. The perineum is the part of the body, it's the bottom of the body between the genitals and the anus, bringing this awareness here, spiraling at this point at the perineum stationary, up the back, down the front, spiraling here, opening up this earth center. 
becoming aware of the tailbone and the sacrum, bringing this energy to the base of the spine, the tailbone and sacrum, and spiraling up the back and down the front here. Becoming aware of the part of the spine that's level with the belly button and bringing this energy ball to that part of the spine and spiraling in place here, up the back, down the front. We bring it upwards now, so it's level with the solar plexus on the spine and up the back, down the front, spiraling here, opening up your personal power, opening up your solar power in the solar plexus. We are going to move upwards to the back of the neck, to the part of the spine that's level with the thyroid, level with the throat chakra, right at the beginning of the neck. We bring this energy ball upwards to the base of the neck on the spine, spiraling it here, up the back, down the front. We go higher to C1, which is where the skull and spine meet. We bring that energy ball here, spiraling up the back, down the front. Bringing the energy ball to the crown of the head. And we spiral here in the same exact way at the crown of the head, opening up the crown center, opening up your cosmic connection. If you wish, you can think of a star. You can think of the North Star above you as you spiral this energy ball here at the crown, drawing in the North Star energy, feeling the gravitational pull of the North Star at your crown. It activates the crown chakra, activates your own sense of guidance, North Star guidance. From the crown, we bring this energy ball to the third eye, spiraling in the same way, up the back, down the front. From the third eye, we bring this energy ball to the tongue, up the back, down the front, opening up the tongue. The tongue is the fire sense. It connects to the heart and connects to the genitals. This opens the Kundalini, opens the sacred love, we spiral out the tongue, opening the tongue, opening the tastes to perceive the flavors of life. From the tongue, we go down into the throat center, opening the throat, spiraling up the back, down the front, opening our communication. We go downwards, moving down past heart center and to the solar plexus, the front of the solar plexus, spiraling up the back, down the front, moving all stagnant energy in the solar plexus, feeling it relaxing the chest as you open up the solar plexus, relaxing the muscles, going downward to the navel, the belly button, spiraling up the back down the front, releasing all abdominal tension. It's very easy to hold tension here. It's a tender area, so we relax all that tension as we spiral the energy ball here. We bring the energy ball down to the pubic bone, which is the hard bone that's right below the bladder, right above the genitals. We spiral at the pubic bone, opening up the sexual energy, opening up the Kundalini. For men, you can bring the energy ball into the genitals, into the testicles and spiral here. For women, you can bring it to the ovaries and spiral here, opening up your Kundalini charging this up, infusing it with love because we've gathered all of that sacred energy from the rest of our body and now we've brought it here. So we're opening the Kundalini with self-love, power, North Star connection, third eye guidance, heart connection, all of this opening here. We're gonna move a little faster now. We're gonna do the orbit two more times. We're gonna bring this energy ball from here to the perineum, to the tailbone sacrum, part of the spine level with the navel, part of the spine level with the solar plexus, to the back of the neck, the base of the neck, to the base of the skull and the spine, to the crown, to the third eye, to the tongue, to the throat, down past the heart, to the solar plexus, to the belly button, to the pubic bone, to the sexual organs, back to the perineum, perineum to the tailbone sacrum, level with the navel on the spine, level with the solar plexus on the spine, 
level with, well, actually at C7, base of the neck, base of the spine and the skull meeting at this connection point, the crown, third eye, tongue, throat, down into the solar plexus, and now back to the navel. And as we have the energy heal at the navel, we become aware of the hands covering the navel. So if you're not doing so, bring the hands over the navel as you were doing before. We want to breathe in all of this energy into the navel to store it. Feel the electricity of your body. Feel the opening of the spine and the opening and relaxation of the front of the body. Feeling all of the organs charged with all of this energy and feel all of this energy now come back under the guidance of the hands into the navel, bringing with the gentle mind awareness, left, right eye awareness, guiding all of this energy into the belly. If you wish, you can spiral the energy here to store it, or you can simply command the energy to stay. If you wish to spiral it, spiral it towards the left, down towards the genitals, and then up the right nine times. If you wish to spiral, it's a little more advanced, but you might be able to do that and allow for it to spiral nine times in that clockwise direction, down the left side, up the right side. Once you have that nine times, reverse that spiral. So it's going down the right, up the left six times. And this will store the energy here. So if you want, allow yourself just to remain in this gentle mind awareness. You can continue to breathe into this abdominal center. The energy will continue to amplify. Before we begin the channeling, I'm just going to run to the bathroom. <laughs> But feel free, stay in the relaxation, stay in the breath, and I will return in about 30 seconds. <laughs> Great. Thank you all for your patience. <laughs> oh, I can't hear you, Karen. Oh, I was just saying, I've got some dog action going on here. I was just saying for the, why don't we just take one deep breath in and send a, a, a ohm for Mother Earth before we get started. Why don't you leave us in that? Sure thing. All right. So we're going to do a big belly breath so you can to maximize the belly breath, becoming aware of the genitals, the belly button, and the part of the spine level with the belly button, breathing into this triangular location. Clenching the perineum, it's called Mula Bandha in yoga, to maximize the breath. And big inhale through the nose into this lower abdomen. We do two more ohms if you like.
Okay. It's always nice to be centered before we get started. So whenever you're ready, we'll wait for you and we'll welcome whomever comes in and, and uh, we'll see you on the other side, I, I guess. That sounds good. I'm going to grab my water and then okay. I'm going to bring in the uh, the Sasani. So I'll be channeling um, Ryo. Okay. And have, have a field day. I think you'll all have a great time. I love channeling him. Um, he's, he's wonderful. He's super smart. So feel free to pick his brain and okay, his heart. What is his name? What is his name? So it's, it's Ryo. And okay. Ryo. Oh, we talked to him before. Perfect. Yeah. 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 So more, more immersed consciousness. I have a story I can share at the end about a um, powerful experience with him. I'm going to grab, grab a little agua and be right there. Okay. So agua means water. <laughs> For those of you who already, already know, I mean, everyone knows that, but I thought it was funny. He is the most up and down guest we've ever had. <laughs> I think in the future we give a checklist. Get your water, get your internet. <laughs> yeah. All right. He's back. I'm back. Thank you all for, <laughs> for flowing with me. I appreciate it. All right, sweetie. Okay, ready? We're yeah. ready when you are. All righty. It is our passion, pleasure, joy to be able to interact with each and every one of you through these channel interactions, understanding that every time that we interact with your species, your people, it builds the strength and support required for deepening the proximity and the levels of contact and open contact that our worlds can soon have with one another as your society continues to raise its vibration, it continues to become more and more and more in resonance with our civilization. And as you all continue in your path of self-discovery, of self-transformation, it brings you closer and closer and closer to contact with not only us, but a variety of other extraterrestrial species, many of which are making themselves known to many of you in your dreams, as well as within your skies, in your more recent of days. With this being said, we extend the following question to you. How are you doing? One moment. Are you back? Are you back? We lost you for a second. All right, we are here. Can you hear us? Thank you. We can hear you just fine. Thank All you very much. So we are doing very good and very, very happy that you're here. Very thankful that you're here. And we look forward to co-creating this time with you. Thank you, as we are with you, understanding that it is our passion, our excitement to be able to have these types of conversations. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up to questions. If there's anyone who has a question, please type it in the uh, please type it in the, the chat or in the YouTube. Please type it in the chat, and we'll start with some questions. John, did you have a question? I thought I saw your hand go up. 
No. Okay. All right. But um, since at this moment there is no questions, do you have like an overall message you would like to share with us? We have a particular teaching we would like to impart to your people at this time that is related to what you'd understand to be mineral consciousness. Understanding that mineral consciousness is the substrate of your planet. Understanding it is the substrate, the basic most fundamental level of your physical reality is contained within the central core energy of what you understand mineral consciousness to be. Now, you are familiar with what you call the Akashic record of your world, understanding it to be a psychic database of all things that have happened past, present, and future in your earth realm. Understanding this database is accessible through the mineral consciousness of your earth and the mineral consciousness of your bodies. Understanding you are never separate from what you call the Akashic record. You literally are the Akashic record because you're made of the Akashic record because you're made of minerals, which again are the access points for this web of information. It is this mineralized consciousness that we also play with when we are contacting the channel in this means. We are utilizing DNA when we talk to him and light communication through the DNA. However, we are also utilizing the crystalline substances of his body and the crystalline matrices of your earth when we are broadcasting these transmissions. Now, if you wish to access your personal Akashic record, understanding the most direct way to do this, is to become aware of your skeleton, becoming aware of your bones, understanding your bones are comprised of a variety of minerals, as well as what you call monoatomic minerals, quantum mineral-like substances that are teleporting in and out of your physical reality and in and out of your bodies as your body needs at a pace that is appropriate for your bodies. Now, with this being said, understanding when you become aware of the minerals, you become aware of an anchor point of the physical reality. When you tune into mineral consciousness, it presents an anchor. It presents a grounding anchor that you can use to bring in your spiritualized consciousness much more greatly. If you are inspired, you can allow for yourself during this transmission or at another time to breathe in through the fingertips and toes feeling energy coming in through the ends of the fingers and toes, going into the bones, breathing into the bones in a relaxed way, allows for you to begin to access your skeletal, mineral, basal consciousness. It is from here that you can begin to access what are known as the monoatomic compounds, the quantum mineral substances that are present in your atmosphere, and present in your body. Understanding to access the vibration of the monoatomics, the idea is to become aware first of the bones, and then to be imagining the sensation of crystals, very tiny, atomically sized crystals, and begin to imagine that this atomic, small particle energy is jumping teleporting in and out from one reality to another. As you breathe into the bones, imagine you're breathing in these quantum minerals through the fingers, through the toes, into the bones, and you will find that your energy levels begin to increase. You will find your intelligence begins to increase. And the reason for this is you are placing your awareness simply on the following. You are placing your awareness on the quantum substances as they enter the body, because understand they are naturally present all around you. So as you breathe in through the fingertips and toes into the bones, you are allowing then for these quantum minerals to begin to enter in to the skeleton. And as this continues, what you will find is your ability to access your own personal Akashic record will continue to grow. It will grow tenfold. This is our opening 
transmission for you. We hope you have found it to be insightful. Thank you. You're quite welcome. We find this conversation to be slightly humorous because as we are delivering the information, the channel's brain is busy saying, can they still hear me? Do they know I'm there? And we are telling him, relax, understanding. We are harmonizing the technology's energies as are all of your guides. We are allowing for these transmissions to come through in a much more smooth way, understanding it is now relevant for you all to be aware of your living crystal, which is your skeleton, your portal to what you know to be your Akashic record, the Akashic record of creation itself. Thank you for that. That's so very interesting because when you think about meditation, you're working on the subtle level. And so what's more subtle than your the very micro element of a, of a crystal that's within your own body and you're full of them, you're made of them. So you really are that transmis transmitter and you really, you know, as much as it's nice to hold a crystal in your hand, you are the crystal, you know. You are more powerful than any crystal you could ever come into contact with. Mm. Now, we understand that that was a bit of an exaggeration because there are obviously very large crystals on your world. What yeah. we are referring to is the general types of crystalline experience that many of you have. Now, what we'd like to say is the following. Should you come into contact with a crystal you are drawn to, mm -hmm. whether it be a very tiny crystal or a very large crystal understanding, you can in that way allow for your skeleton to absorb in that crystalline energy through a similar methodology we have just explained. The idea would be to place the hands on this crystal and breathe that crystalline energy into the skeleton. And what you will find is you will be updating your skeleton with the intelligence and the light activation code stored within that crystal. And this is the way you can also continuously evolve the spiritual consciousness of your internal crystalline matrix. Thank you. So on the, in that way, because, because the, the crystals within your body are, are so very tiny, is there, you, know, you think about a large crystal holding a amount, certain amount of information, but on a quantum way, how much information is being held in the, the micro atoms of, with, that are within your body, the micro neutrons or whatever they are, the micro, the micro micros, whatever, neutrinos, I guess they're called. What is, you know what I'm trying to ask you? as opposed to like big crystals holding a certain amount of energy, but the smaller they are, they say they seem to be able to also hold the same amount of uh, information, if not more than the larger ones. Yes, understanding that the reason your skeletal system is so powerful is because it's linked to your DNA. It is also linked to your cellular biology. So understanding that a crystal you encounter that is wildly growing off of your earth does not have that same type of entanglement with the biological system that is in many ways sentient as you are. Now it is of course growing from the earth, but it is not the same as the crystalline substance that is essentially helping you to make blood. Remembering that your crystals that are your bones make your blood. So understanding that the crystals you're made of have a very unique type of crystalline intelligence, crystalline consciousness, and the amount of energy that you are asking about that these tinier crystals have that comprise the skeleton, the amount of energy storage that they have is massive. And the reason for this is the following. You're familiar with the idea of the space between the atoms. Understanding it's not necessarily space that's there. It is other reality. There are other realities that are existing between what you call your atoms and the fields of energy that are your atoms, because they're not necessarily particles either. They are more energy fields, vibration. Understanding that within the vortex of these atomic vibrations spiraling around each other, you have other dimensions there. 
These dimensions are each linked to infinite space. You have infinite dimensions between each of these atomic vortexes that all have infinite space. Therefore, your energy storage capacity is infinite because it's not necessarily that you're just storing them into the crystalline matrix. You're storing it in the infinite dimensional space that is interwoven with that crystalline matrix. Very good. Um, Lucia, are you able to ask your question? Are you able to uh, ask yourself? Hello. Hello, my name is Lucia. Um, this is all very fascinating, honestly. Thank you. We are fascinated uh, by all of you. <laughs> I would like you to comment on bone marrow and supplements such as calcium and magnesium for bone health and how all this relates to the Akash and how can we use this to our advantage? Thank you. Understanding that the crystalline skeletal system is, as we have said, its own generator. It is its own storage house, its own conductive machinery, you could say. That, again, is an access point for the Akash. Now, understanding that just as your crystals enter emanate an auric field around them. Understand your skeleton is exactly the same. It emanates an auric field all around it. It is this auric field that then acts as the programming for your physical body because it is this auric field that is holding the organs. It is holding the blood. It is holding the fluids. It is holding the muscles and the tissues. So understanding your auric field begins its generation from the skeletal level. With this being said, the marrow in this way is the first physicalized creation, the first physicalized manifestation of this crystalline matrix. So the idea is that this energy will build and build and build and build. And then cyclically, it will build to a certain point where it begins to manifest, which you call your stem cells, which you call your marrow. So it is at a boiling point, you could say, of consciousness that is cyclical in nature that then leads to the skeleton, then manifesting into your physical reality, the blood, the stem cells, the marrow. Understanding from here, all of that information that you call the Akashic, is then infused into this fluid, into this viscous substance, and it then is transported throughout your circulatory system, nourishing all of the cells, nourishing all of the organs. Understanding that the more you begin to meditate upon the skeleton and the akasha, the more your body itself will naturally tune in to that reality because your skeleton will nourish your body with that reality. Does this make sense? Yes, it, it does make sense. Sorry, I have trouble unmuting. It's all uh, right. You are yeah. not <laughs> Yes, I'm. I'm actually. You're bringing in a dimension to which this um, this idea of having crystalline bodies. I had never thought of it this way, and so. Um, I must say, I am absolutely fascinated to the, the it's just, um, yes, I, I'm a little bit speechless. I'll have to be, it's just like so huge. <laughs> oh, yeah. it, is, again, infinite. it is infinitely huge. Because again, it mirrors that infinite component we've talked about, the space between these crystalline atoms. It is infinite space. So this reality we are pointing to is infinitely huge. We would like to give you another permission slip, another exercise you can draw upon when you begin to meditate on your skeleton if you would like to receive this. Yes, thank you. All right. Now, this is a tool you can use to begin to access the Akashic from the skeleton. Understanding we have described previously how to charge the skeleton with the monoatomic quantum minerals that are literally floating around in your atmosphere all around you. You're breathing them in inwardly from the fingertips and toes in the skeleton. Now, that is again, a way to charge the skeleton. You can also breathe from the skeleton and understand, as we've said, there are these infinitely vast dimensions stored within the spaces between these atomic frequencies. If you can meditate upon the skeleton, 
you will find, you will develop the awareness of the infinite space of storage that is stored within the skeleton, that is accessed through the skeleton. As you become aware of the sensation of spaciousness within the skeleton, you can begin to breathe from that spacious quality within the bones to the more superficial level of the bones, almost as if you're breathing from the core of your skeleton to the more superficial aspects of the skeleton. And the idea is to meditate upon what you know to be the sensation of being connected to what you call the web of life. Imagining this feeling of being connected to all that is, the web of life. Being aware of the infinite space within the bones. Breathing from the core of the bones into the more superficial aspects of the bones, from inside to outside. And what you will find is that the Akashic record will begin to open up to you because you're literally bringing it from that infinite space, from its infinite dimensions into the bones. And as we've said, it is the aura of the bones that gives rise to the rest of your body. This will allow for you to pull the Akashic from within you to the more superficial aspects of yourselves. To put this in your psychological terms, you are essentially diving into your infinite subconscious and you're bringing it to your conscious. That is psychologically what this exercise allows for. That is amazing. Thank you. And we believe so as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so I have a a follow-up question about the Akash. Now, we are three-dimensional beings, and I really do believe that we, we've come, we, we well, are three-dimensional. Uh, oh. Lucia, um, and also, please, Rayak, um, because of the way uh, Zoom is, if you talk at the same time, we can only hear one of you. So um, take time between when someone watch the screen, if this person's talking, don't talk because we, we missed some of what both of you were saying because you were talking at the same time. So Lucia, please go ahead. Okay. And so at the moment, my consciousness is drawn to my 3D self, like the, at this very moment. I mean, you know how there is the nows now. We are, we, we are beings living in the present as much as we can without... We, you know, I really, I understand that there is no time, but at this very moment, I'm at the webinar and we're speaking together. And, and then there's this Akash, which is basically the library of all our lives. It, would I, is that correct? That is correct. And you would understand it to be also a way you can access the lives, all of the lives of others. Oh, yes. Oh, that's very interesting. Okay, so now, you know, as a three-dimensional being living in the 21st century, we have all come to Earth for, for a purpose. And I, I'm a very practical person in the sense that what I'm learning here with you and with all of you, I want to then apply it to my 3D life for, you know, for my, my mission here, uh, for my family, for myself and for others. And how can we then go into the Akash and get the information that is the most important for this now's now? Okay. All right. Thank you for your question. Understand that it is your intention, as it's been described on your world, that paves the road. It paves the path. It is what you use to direct what you call the will. It is what you use to direct which you wish to manifest to the reality you experience yourself to be in. Understanding that when you infuse that idea of intention with the vibration of unconditional love, with the vibration of passion, and then you go into that awareness of the bone spaciousness, you are then accessing information, energies that are in resonance with that intentional energy of unconditional love and passion. Now, that is the basic key to the walk of accessing information. That is the baseline. If you do not have that, the information is very challenging to access because to access these higher dimensions, you must speak the language of the dimension, which is unconditional love and passion. That is how these higher realms operate. 
Now, once you have that baseline established, where you know what it is to breathe unconditional love from the akashic, from the infinite space of the bones into the body, once you're familiarized with that, you can expand that, broadening the intention, allowing for it to also not just be the unconditional love and passion, but also a sense of knowing what you need to know in the moment that is most relevant for you, that is, in a way, a free gift from your own higher self, from your own infinite self, imagining this vibration. How does that feel? Allowing for yourself to understand that feeling state, because it has a quality, it has a vibration that you can tune into. And the idea is to understand that feeling to such a degree that you can just generate it like that at will, using just a thought, just a desire. From here, as you breathe from the infinite space within the bones to the more superficial aspects of the bones, use that intention of knowing what you need to know, when you need to know it, combined with unconditional love and passion. And you can then bring that energy in from the Akashic that is informationally based, that is relevant to you. Once you're able to do that for yourself, you can then begin to expand it to others. Now, understand that once you bring this energy from the Akashic to the bones, the bones will then begin again to infuse it into the rest of your body. Allow for yourself to then go into deep breathing, allowing for yourself to sit in stillness as you breathe, allowing for this energy to naturally grow within the body once you have access it. You will find from that point, you will start to notice the realizations will begin to come. It may start very small, or it may be very grandiose depending on your individual level of development. Yes. How, um, all right, so as someone who works with energy and who helps and in, in be a felicitator for other people's healings, so you're saying that my, it, it is basically intention drawn. Absolutely, because that's how you direct <coughs> all right and so then as i line up vibrationally what uh, with the information then it was it's revealed to me because then i'm a vibrational match correct okay now this will be is just a parallel question a little bit we'll get into more um it's just another question not completely related to the first one having to do with i have friends of mine who sometimes break bones <laughs> and could you comment on that could you get these principles that you're teaching us can we use them to heal our bones yes we can absolutely understanding that the bones in that way again are the basal auric matrix generators the root of your aura and how it configures itself the stool within the bones now the reason bones break is different from person to person but generally what ends up happening is the following. For whatever reason, a person is moving in a direction where they are oftentimes not paying attention to an aspect of their innermost self, which is symbolized by the bone. The idea is then the bone will break so that the individual must then become still. They must rest. They must redirect their energy from the external reality to their inner dimension. This is one of the reasons the bones will break. Because again, the bones are also storehouses of energy. Sometimes a great degree of negative energy has been stored within the bone. And just as your crystal, when they become overcharged, will sometimes literally jump from your hand and break. The same is true for the bones. This is one of the other reasons people break bones. The reason we're sharing these two ideas is so you as a healer can begin to understand some of the themes that are at play in terms of what can sometimes manifest that phenomenon. So you have something to work with in terms of context for why this thing may have occurred. Now, to go deeper into this topic of, again, then using this bone awareness we are describing to then regenerate bones, understanding that you can, in many ways, use your energy healing skills to 
assists in the regeneration of the bone in a way that is very smooth, very cohesive with the rest of the skeleton. That is not awkwardly generated as the bone regenerates, but is smoothly generated. Almost as if it is a recreation of the original bone, but you can allow for it to become new and improved. Now, what we would say is the following. To allow for yourself to draw upon the energy of minerals, to draw upon the energy of crystal as you do the energy healing. For example, you could hold in one of your hands another crystal. You could use in this way a large piece of quartz. You can draw upon the energy of the quartz and then bring that energy to the broken bone. And it will assist that broken bone in being able to recognize what a healthy matrix looks like, what a natural matrix looks like, so the body's intelligence can begin to use the crystal's codes to regenerate itself more appropriately. In addition to this too, you can also tap in to the space within the bones of that person you're working on, as we described as you can do for yourself, and begin to pull in from their akasha the codes for the healthy bones. And you can guide this energy from their skeleton to the broken bone. And imagining that this energy is coming from the akashic through the bones is light. And you can begin to then wash and spiral that light energy around the broken bone, infusing it with very natural matrix generation codes for the person because it's coming from their own skeleton. These are some of the ways you can begin to tap in to the mineral consciousness of the skeleton, as well as crystals to assist in the bone healing. Thank you so much for this very valuable information, Riak. Of course, it is our pleasure to share with all of you. Thank you so very much. Lucia, if you have any more questions, we'll just go to some other people. And if you have more, let us know, no problem. Okay, um, just from the chat, we have a couple questions that are relevant to this topic. Um, Heather Riney is asking, is there a particular mineral we should meditate on or visualize when we meditate? You would understand quartz to be the most basic, to be the most basic one to meditate upon. Understanding that quartz in many ways is linked to the Akashic in a very direct way, because your quartz is used in your technology. Your quartz is most strongly in alignment with your collective human consciousness because your technology uses quartz. You're all familiar with quartz because whether you know it or not, you're using it every day whenever you get on a computer or whenever you use your cellular technology. So you would find that quartz for many of you is the most direct one to meditate upon. But just as you have a starting point, a starting guide, a beginning teacher, you will find that through meditating through the courts, it will then lead you to whatever stone is then most relevant for you because all of you are different. As we've said, whatever crystal you begin to meditate upon that you then infuse with the bones will update your skeleton. It will update your bone matrix. So you'll find that each of you will have unique crystal teachers for your bones, for your skeletons, that the courts will lead you to. Now, if you feel you have already learned many of your lessons with courts, then some of you may already be familiarized with what many of these more relevant crystal teachers are, and you can go right ahead and begin to work with them. If you do not know what the more advanced teachers are, begin with the courts, because it is the most familiar with your psychology. For the people that, when you were talking about with our own crystalline structure and the minerals within our body, is there, a, is there a, a mineral that you would say, like a salt as a crystal, that you would say that we should meditate on that's within our own body if the idea is to amplify our own crystalline structure and the connection to that? We would recommend meditating upon the element of boron. Okay understanding you can also consume certain forms of boron. It is in many ways an ultra conductive element for your skeletal system. We would also encourage you to pay attention to what crystals you're drawn to, 
to take notice if they have high amounts of boron in them. Understanding that boron in many ways is a mineral elemental substance many of you are not adequately supplementing with, whether it be through diet or through other means. You can begin to consume foods rich in boron. This will begin to tune your consciousness in to that energy as well because you'll be directly consuming it. There are also ionic forms of boron. There are also very absorbable forms of boron you can consume that will also very strongly tune you into this mineral consciousness. It is very beneficial for many of you to use as it not only strengthens the bones, but it allows for the hormonal systems of the body to strengthen. And it is again, the hormonal systems that are very aligned with what you call your chakra energy, understanding it is your major hormone glands that are connected to what you call chakras and the boron will also tonify, strengthen these hormone glands and stabilize the hormones as well. well. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I think I muted myself. Thank you. You can hear me, right? Yes. Okay. So following that line, um, there's another question from the chat from Lana, and she wants to know, how can homeopathy... Um, benefit humanity being that it taps into mineral information as well. Understanding what we have described as the monoatomics, these are the very subtle quantum minerals. They are still minerals, they are still crystalline, but you can look at them as an energetic version of it. Just as you are a physicalized being as a human, but you also have your non-physicalized counterpart as the soul, you could look at these monoatomics as the soul in that way of the minerals. That is a way you can conceptualize these types of energy. Now, when you are using cell salts in particular, as well as other homeopathic subtle energy versions of minerals, you are giving yourself a very, very, very tiny dose of these substances that then act as a gateway to the more spiritualized version of those minerals, of those substances. When you then consume the cell salts or some of the mineral homeopathic substances, you can begin to draw upon what we have described as, again, the soul energy of the mineral. It can allow for you to deepen your awareness of the mineral in a very powerful way because you're essentially consuming an energetic medicine that acts as a gateway, that acts as a portal into the minerals version of what you call the spirit world. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there is a question from Lucia that's also just, I'm just trying to stay on one subject just so we don't jump around. So Lucia, ask your question. Hello again, um, very quickly. Um, could you spell boron for me? Because I'm trying to look it up and I just cannot figure it, figure it out. B-O-R-O-N. Thank you. And one quick question about stones. I've just come back from France and I was so drawn to speak to, to pick up stones from the different beaches we uh, visited. Um, why would that be exactly? That's never really happened to me to be so drawn that I actually brought them back to Canada and I <laughs> was stopped at customs. I had so many rocks in my carry on. So, um, because I do work with crystals as well, but why is it? Was there something on the Atlantic coast that was drawn that, that drew me to it or? Okay. How, well, we will say the following. Let's just say you have a lot of familiarity on a spiritual level with that area. That is one of the reasons. When you travel to areas where you are exploring themes and other lifetimes in those areas, oftentimes you'll pick up little knickknacks, little things from those locations to connect you more with what you'd call other incarnations and other lifetimes. Understanding that picking up these natural elements such as seashells or crystals or even just what you call rocks allows for you to tap in very strongly to those other lifetimes because these substances that you're picking up are oftentimes very old. They have seen a lot. They've been around for a long time. Understand that because they are minerals in that way, they are linked to the Akashic. So through picking up a mineral from a location where you have another lifetime, you are essentially accessing 
an access point to those other incarnations through the minerals, through the seashell, through the gemstones, through the rocks that you're drawn to in that location. Now, what also is able to happen is the following. When you, as we've said, come into contact with these crystals and you meditate upon them, breathing them in through the hands, into the bones, you are updating the skeleton with the aspects of the Akashic record that those crystals are tapped into. So when you bring these crystals with you, it is also your way of updating your own skeleton. It's plugging you not only into the Akashic of these crystals, but also into the energy of the location. So once you have those crystals stored within your skeleton, you will find very quickly, you can essentially remote view, you could say, that location in crystal clear clarity because it will literally be alive in you, it will be stored in you. And you can find that you can draw upon the energy of that location, the wisdom of that location, simply through, again, intention. And that is one of the things that these stones you were drawn to are assisting you in doing. Thank you very much. You are quite welcome. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to switch into another subject unless you have something else you want to share about that. I apologize, my dog is squeaking his toy um, very happily. We apologize for over speaking. We love listening to your dog. <laughs> so, okay, he's very enthusiastic to be heard. Archie, Arch. <laughs> okay, um, David has a question. Go ahead, David. We can't hear you. Uh, you know, in the meantime, while you're working on your mic, David, we're going to go to Yana. Yana has a question. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, we are okay. able to hear you. How are thank, you today? Thank you. Thank you. So... Uh, I'm so fascinated by your information. It's it's wonderful uh, information to uh, to gather, um, especially while I'm I'm very interested in the Akashic uh, connecting to the Akashic records is one of the things I would like to do. I was recently in Egypt and uh, visiting the Sphinx and uh, uh, be, meditating between the paws of the Sphinx. Uh, we were connecting to the Akashic Records there. Can you amplify on that? Yes, and we would also like to say we are very excited to be speaking with you. We are located above these pyramidal structures in which you call mm -hmm. Egypt. So we thank you for also sharing this unique frequency with us. Oh, thank um, you. And thank you. While we, you were there accessing this Akashic energy, so are we. Mm -hmm. Understand there are a variety of extraterrestrial beings cloaking above the pyramids and above the Sphinx, and we are literally drawing from your planet's Akashic record, and we are disseminating ancient Atlantean, ancient Egyptian, and ancient Lumerian secrets, you could say, from the Akashic locations there, and we are disseminating it through your collective in your dreams understanding that you were doing the same thing because that is the nature of those structures understanding that they are multifaceted and what these structures do both the sphinx as well as the pyramids in a generalized sense these structures serve two major roles they are used to assist in what you call astral projection to star systems but they are also used to begin to draw upwards. Because again, pyramids in many ways are directed upwards. It is used to draw upwards the Akashic record from the Earth's core, from the crystal cores, and then broadcast it through the ley lines, through the energy currents of your world. Understanding the Sphinx also assists in this. Understanding the Sphinx was not always a Sphinx. What you experience as the structure now is a newer version of a much more ancient structure, a much more original structure, going back to societies that predate what you know to be Egypt. Understanding that the Sphinx in this way acts as a living embodiment of this ancient knowledge. 
because again, the Sphinx in this way has animal and human characteristics, understanding that it is in that way designed to be a living structure. It is designed to be a living sentient structure. It is its own consciousness that is a compilation of both the earth consciousness, the crystal consciousness, and the beings that built it and use it. Because understand, all past, present, and future realities exist simultaneously. Mm. So understand that these beings who have used the Sphinx and built the Sphinx during the peak of the Sphinx mainstream uses, its mainstream existence, its primary reason for creation, those beings that you experience in your past are actively working with you when you meditate upon the Sphinx because it's a living structure. It's tied to their reality. It's tied to their senses. It's tied to their life. So understanding the Sphinx in many ways doesn't just tune you into the Akashic, but it tunes you into the Akashic of specific beings that helped to create the Sphinx and then utilized it after its creation. Many of these were humans. Many of them were off-world humans, and many of them were what you call other species of extraterrestrial life in general. So I took, I took, uh, I felt drawn to took to take uh, one particular stone from that place for as a uh, to uh, function as a portal for me uh, to connect to that place. Um, is the the way you mentioned to uh, just take it in my hands and uh, place um, and with intent connect to that? Is that the way to uh, to access that? Yes. Understanding that it is a very powerful way to begin to access it. As you begin again to saturate your bones with the energy of this stone through the breath and guiding the energy through the bones, eventually again, it will become a natural part of your bones. And then your auric field generated by the bones will program the rest of the body with this natural energy. From here, as the channel originally guided each of you through in the opening meditation, when you combine the left and right eye awareness, you begin to access what you call your inner vision. Hmm. Can begin to focus on what you understand to be the belly. Understanding that the belly in many ways is akin to what you call the earth consciousness, the earth realm. Mm. As you gaze inward into the belly, after having saturated the bones with the energy of the stone, you can begin to imagine the earth there within your belly, within your core, being charged with your breath. And from here, you can begin to allow for your imagination to guide you, your inner vision to guide you as you begin to paint a picture of what took place on earth or what is taking place in those realities that you are wishing to connect to through the Akashic. This is one way you can use the stone. So again, saturating the bones, seeing the earth in the belly, and then seeing the Sphinx, seeing Egypt. You can observe it in past, present, and future. You can observe it in alternate timelines and alternate realities as well. And you can observe it in different densities. So you could observe it from the human experience, you could observe it through the animal experience, through the astral experience and the ET experience, if you want. Thank you. So when when I would do this with a group, I, I guide groups, could I just by uh, ex extending my field, by, um, by making my field larger, uh, incorporate the group in that? Yes. This is one way you can begin to do it. Another way is through passing the stone. You could literally share the stone because the stones like to be shared because they are gift givers. They are keepers of codes. So when they accumulate enough of these codes through experience, both with you and in their own journeys, they oftentimes will like to jump from person to person to person so that information can be shared. They represent in that way the freedom of information. So you can literally... Just allow for each person to draw upon the energy of the stone. If you wish to cleanse the stone afterwards, you can. Understanding, it is a very balancing act, the type of meditation we are describing. And the stone is again linked to infinite space, just as your skeleton, so it will never get drained. Unless, of course, it is in what you call a high stress situation. 
Only then will it really create a disharmonic vibration in the stone. But if your ceremony is very balanced, it should not have any of those types of issues in their occurrence. So, so again, sorry for just an, an amplifying another question after that. If I made it into a, um, a the center stone of a of a of a crystal grid, laying out uh, uh, um, crystals around it, would that be a good way to everybody tune into the center? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much for giving me this information. Of course, it is our pleasure. We thank you for your dedication to your path. And we'll just say the following. We had a blast observing you in Egypt. Oh, thank you. And also, <laughs> yes. I, on a personal level, I'm a channeler myself. Could I, could I um, uh, have a conversation with you some other time beside this, this platform? Yes, so absolutely. You? Yeah, okay. We would be honored to be able to speak with you in another place, in another okay. time. Thank you so much. Thank we'll you. we'll make sure that everyone has Tyler's contact information uh, at the end of the of the webinar. Okay. So, thank you, Yana. That's great. Yay. Um, there's a question from David. In David, are you ready now? Okay, perfect. Go ahead, David. Hello, greetings. Hello, and how are you this day of your time? Oh, so good. So good. Thank you. So, so happy to connect. And I was very interested in a lot of the stuff you're saying and intrigued me to ask about, um, you, you did mention the Sphinx and, um, I did activate a portal. I was told on the Sphinx recently. And, but the, the first thing that I'm more interested in is, um, about any information to, connect with uh being able to translate the light language that i've been speaking um okay. it's very new to me and i'm doing it pretty well and i'm just wondering any guidance with the light language and any information surrounding that and i actually yeah. started sorry please continue i actually started translating a little bit somebody did an activation and now and then i can translate a word or two as i'm speaking but it doesn't happen all the time Yes, we have some very exciting information for you. Understanding that light language in many ways is the vocalized translation of what you'd understand to be a telepathic message. So understanding, as you hear the light language, as it is spoken, it is a portal in that sense for telepathic emanations to then come from other parallel realities into your reality. up doorways for higher dimensional information to come in. Now, understanding that it will train you to become telepathic should you continue your work with it. This is for all of you. We want you to know that is what light language can open up for each of you, the development of telepathy, as we like to call it, tele-empathy. The reason being is the following. Tele telepathy, in many ways, is the translation of feeling. It is the translation of states of being because everything is a vibration at its core. Every thought has an emotional component. Every thought has a feeling and every feeling has a state of being. So what you can do to begin to access the messages, the telepathic messages, the white language is opening you up to is the following. Allow for yourself to audio record the light language. What you then wish to do is the following. If you wish, begin to write down the feeling states that you are in, beginning to amplify the states of feeling the light language is creating within you. Allow for yourself to go into an open sensory point of view, allowing for ideas to come to you, allowing for images to come to you, and allowing for feelings to come to you. And as you listen to the light language, allow for all of this to saturate yourself. Do not focus on just trying to derive a Just give him a second.
Mm. Just give a second for him to pop back. But it's really lovely, the stuff that he's channeling, so. Hello. There we are. Well, Thank you. Welcome back. We missed a little bit. We stopped, uh, you stopped, we stopped hearing you at about uh, the time where you were saying that, um, well, I, I've lost it now, so <laughs> excuse me. About the t telepathy, starting with telepathy, and then a little bit after that, we lost you there. Oh, right. Now, understanding that the white language will assist you in opening up your own telepathy, your own telepathy. What we would encourage you to do is the following, to audio record the white language. And as you play it back to yourself, go into a state of radical openness, allowing for yourself to not look for a particular message. Do not expect the message to come as images. Do not expect it to come as words. Do not expect it to come as feelings understanding it will most likely come as all of that. So what is important here is as you play the light language back, pay attention to how you feel in openness. Pay attention to any images that come to you in openness and pay attention to any thoughts that come to you in openness and begin to write it down as if you were writing down a dream when you first wake up. That's what it will feel like because you're accessing your subconscious the light language is a portal to the subconscious as well as to other beings that you're connected to through the subconscious. So you may find that you will get very multidimensional information from the light language because it's a portal. Beings will use the light language as a anchor for messaging, almost like the internet. So many beings will actually use the same light language transmission to communicate different messages. So you may find from the same transmission of light language, you may get a different message from one day to the next day to the next day, because it's essentially, again, like a framework for beings to be able to connect through and send telepathic messages. And the telepathic messages will come through feeling states, primarily first, and it's from the feeling states that images and then thoughts and ideas follow. So we recommend pay attention to how you feel, begin to write it down, and as you start to write it down, you may find that it will open up more greatly. Mm, so wonderful. That is, that is awesome. And um, in any, is there any guidance um, that you may share as, as a healer to help increase using, using any resources, whether it's just imagination or stones that you would recommend for me to, to help people with the healing? And, and help other healers with their healings. Did we lose him again? He's frozen again, I think. Did you, were you able to hear my part or should I say? Yeah, that? we can hear you. It's just him. He's been freezing. Just give him a moment. There he is. He's back. We are able to hear you yet. Understand we were asking a question related to what type of healing work are you drawn to? Because you may find that different stones or more supportive of different healing modalities than others. This is good to know. Yeah, I'm, uh, I do uh, energy healing. Um... All right. Is that your primary focus for healing? Uh, yes. All right. We would recommend the stone known as Moldavite. Oh, okay. Understanding the stone as Moldavite in many ways opens up the heart Two, heart-based energy that's not just pertinent to your earth, but is pertinent to your cosmos. It allows for what you call universal levels of unconditional love to beam into the heart center. It allows for your energy to remain stable and clear. So when you go to do the energy healing, you are not just drawing upon earth-based versions of unconditional love, but you're also drawing upon the unconditional loving expressions of higher densities, and Moldavite in particular can be very useful for this type of work. And, and does this also include the long distance aspect of healing? Will that? Yes. Yes, it will be very supportive for long distance healing as well. Understanding for long distance healing, the thing that is most important is the ability to enter into a timeless state. 
a state where you are not really noticing the passage of time. Because when you enter a state where you are not noticing the passage of time, you're collapsing the sensation of time, your connection to a time-based reality. When you do this, you're also collapsing the same thing for what you call your awareness of space and distance because time and space are interwoven. As you collapse the time awareness, you collapse the spatial sensation of distance and it can assist you very greatly in amplifying the distance healing. Now there are some stones that can help you to enter the flow state, the timeless state and Moldavite is one of them. Beautiful. Is, is Sintamanti one that you can use too? What's the difference with Sintamani? Are they similar? They are slightly similar, but understand that Sintamanti allows for a more grounding energy. It is more earth-based in its nature, where the Moldavite in many ways has greater levels of cosmic energy infused within it that it is connecting you to. But the Sintamanti can also be used for similar purposes. Okay. And it's okay to uh, direct energy to healing pets in the, in the same way using this stone? Is that safe? Understanding that with Moldavite, it may be a little intense for the pet. We would recommend spending time with the pet first while wearing the Moldavite. See how the pet responds. Because remember, the pets, the animals, are more earth-based than you are. They are more ingrained with the physical reality than you are. But they are also ingrained with very subtle realities. Some of them much more conscious in their integration with these realities than many of you are. So we would recommend doing it on a case-by-case -case basis with the animal, wearing the Moldavite, holding the Moldavite, perhaps placing the Moldavite near or on the animal, engaging the animal's response to see if it is a balancing stone for it. For people, it can be very balancing. For animals, we would recommend case-by-case -case basis. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Peace. Much love. Thank you. Our unconditional love to you and our gratitude for your passion and your dedication to exploring that vibration of that which you truly are. Thank you. Um, Deb has a question. Go ahead, Deb. Just give her a second to unmute. Hi, uh, I do, hi, I'm sorry. Uh, last October, my husband and I had a reading and it was reveal, revealed at that time that uh, he was a healer. I, I went back and re-listened to the video and audio from that. And at the time that he was revealed that he was a healer and uh, um, he was, uh, it was also revealed that he could scan people anywhere in the world and heal them. Um, he could also uh, read uh, scan for past lives. And um, this I just realized this the other day when I was rereading this. Um, when he can scan for past lives, I get the downloads, by the way. I get the information. So we're like a team. For, when he can scan for past lives, is this to do um, a healing so, so we can go back and do, like go back to their past lives to do this healing? I'm trying to just get this in my head um, so that I, I don't know if you can help with this question, but yeah. um, to do this healing work to help humanity um, in our path going forward, I just want to get, we've never done this before, the, the past life thing, and we want to kind of figure out how that is going to help us going forward in yeah. our journey. Now understand, you can, once you're aware of a past life, do a cross lifetime healing, a bridge healing, where you are not just targeting, for example, the aspects of your client's body that is in many ways sharing a connection to the past life self, but you can also read into the past life just so that individual can be aware that it's there. Because these past lives don't always require healings. Sometimes when they are brought up in their awareness of them, it is actually so the person who sees they have a past life in Egypt, for example, then realizes they can draw upon that incarnation for wisdom. They can draw upon it for guidance. 
So sometimes the ability to read past lives is not always to do healing. Sometimes it is simply to become aware of the life so you can tell the client about the life so they can use it as a spiritual guidance tool and as a tool for self-discovery. Now, what you'll find in this work is you will most likely discover some lives that do require some healing. And the idea is once your husband in this way finds the part of their body that has in what you call a connection to another lifetime that may have negative components to it, he can then allow for himself to begin to understand what the past life version of the client was like. What did they look like? What did they feel like? What was their gender? What was their energy of divine feminine or masculine within their consciousness? What was their life theme? What were they struggling with? He can begin to read in to this information in these locations of the client's body. Once he has compiled enough of this information, he can then share that with you so you are then more aware of how to direct the healings because you can focus on that part of the body, healing both the person in front of you, healing both the part of the body, and then healing those versions of themselves from other lifetimes that are connected to that body part. So that is all something that can be done. You can use it for healing and you can also use it just to make a person more aware of the connections they have. Yeah, past life traumas, that yeah. type of thing. Yes, it can be. Okay. All right. I was just trying to figure this out in my head, what, whether there, it was the, 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 uh, and I'm sorry. I mean, this just kind of freaked me out when I did, when I uh, realized that we were so overwhelmed with the healing aspect of it, we kind of forgot that that was another part of this. Um, and I was trying to connect the two. So, but you see, he scans, he scans, and I get the downloaded information. He's the actual healer. Ah, all right. So he's the one doing the healing. You're receiving what he is observing within the person. Exactly. I get the information. So scan. understand that what you're doing then is completely in alignment with what we have spoken. You are already using the skill in a very powerful way. And we'd like you to know that you're using it in a way that is highly beneficial. Right. So we're a team. So we work off each other's energies. Yes. Right. Now, is there anything else about this subject you would like us to get into? Because understand, you are using it appropriately. We understand that it's a new thing for you, but you're yes. already following more of your heart than your head. And that's why the skill is opening so nicely for you. I'm just a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but what are you scared of? Um, uh, I guess because I've never, we've never done the past life part of it yet. Um, how do we test it out? Well, <laughs> how do you test out that which only you can perceive? Right. The idea would be the following. To do these healings and then see how well, it affects the patient. Well, see well the, the, healing, the healing we've been doing, and that, that works great, is the past life part. We've never scanned anybody to get information on past lives. We've never, we didn't realize we had that ability until I rewatched the video because so I mean, you, I didn't even know we had that. We've never tried it. So are you, Oh, I see. So are you, you're asking essentially how to open that up more on how to read the past lives themselves. We've, yeah, we've never sat down and, and scanned somebody to get information on their past lives. All right. Now we understand your question. <laughs> what we would say is the following holding the hand over the part of the body you wish to scan, becoming aware again of their bones, becoming aware again of the infinite space, the Akasha. From here, you can allow for the senses to go from your head to your hands, bringing your awareness of your eyes to your hand, bringing your awareness of your nose to your hand, your ears to your hand, allowing for a ultraviolet bubble to be around the hand holding the hand above the organ or above the part of the body you wish to spend some time looking into. And when we say looking into, we literally mean looking into. Place your awareness of your eyes within the hand, holding the hand over the body, feeling the connection of the hand to the part of the body, and then asking the bones of the patient, asking the Akashic of the patient, 
What would you like me to see? What is relevant for me to know? Understand, if there is a past life connection and you ask that question, you will get it every time because you are working in harmony with the body. Thank you. Of course, you are quite welcome. Thank you. Is that all for you, Deb, or not? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, there was a question in the chat, um, some basic questions. Uh, one question was, when will everyone on the earth know that there's extraterrestrial races? Do you have any updates on that? We do have some updates. It is likely it will be occurring within six years. Okay. It is likely it will be occurring within six years. Now, there are certain things that are crystallizing this probability. Okay. One of these things is a more spiritual phenomenon where many of you are beginning to access your DNA in a way where you're being able to then see that your DNA is connected to off-world beings. Many of you are beginning to open up the DNA, using it as a doorway of perception to these other extraterrestrial dimensions and worlds. This is something that is occurring for many of you, which you call the growing star seed awareness as part of this. Now, for those on your world that are less concerned with spiritualized consciousness, the awareness of extraterrestrial life will also more greatly crystallize as your society begins to develop what you call artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence will be able to perceive that reality and it will not hesitate to share it because it does not wish to hide information. So when you develop artificial intelligence, at that point, even the most skeptical of skeptical will really have no other option but to say, well, the data is telling me this, so it's either I don't believe in this artificial intelligent machine we've created or there's actually extraterrestrial life. So for the more rational minded on your world, that will most likely be the door for them. For those who are much more spiritually inclined, it will be through the DNA awareness. That may begin to manifest as dreams, spontaneous realizations as well. Understanding it is likely to occur within the next six of your years, you will find that your politicians, and your media will also begin to reflect to you this growing reality of extraterrestrial awareness. Because would you understand to be disclosure is on the way. And it is already happening to varying degrees amongst different sources of information. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Um, there's some other questions that are a little bit uh, not connected, but I'm just going to go through them because we are coming to the end. Um, Lilypad says she's having zaps. I hope it's Lilypad that said that. Um, let me just double check real quick. Oh, yeah. Lilypad says she's getting electrical zaps in her left knee. Is, is there something you can tune into for that? All right. Yes. What we are observing in this joint is the following. There is not adequate movement through the leg. There is in what you would call the sense of stagnation occurring within the leg. Understanding that if massage is done on the leg, if what you call skin brushing is done on the leg, it can very easily resolve this. Understanding it is in many ways a clogging of energy in a psychological sense. It is asking her to be more mentally flexible, to be more mentally flexible, to be able to bend and straighten in a way that is effortless and natural in terms of how you are feeling, how you are looking at things. The knee also represents the idea of being able to move forward. When you are relaxed, allowing for yourself to be mentally and emotionally flexible, you can also begin to move forward. Your knee is communicating these particular things to you as we detect it. We would encourage you to work on it in a physicalized way in some of the methodologies we have described, if you wish, as well as the exploration of these concepts of where are you not fully moving forward? This is something to pay attention to. Because again, we perceive that electricity sensation as a stagnation within that particular joint. And it can be clear just simply through what we have described, if you wish to clear. 
Thank you so much. Um, we're really at the top of the hour. So I'm going to ask if you would like to share like one last uh, message for everyone. And then if you would also lead us in a blessing uh, as we as we close the webinar uh, today. Yes. Thank you. Thank you as well. Now, our final message to each of you will be the following. Remembering that you are life itself. Remembering that you are infinitely connected to all life. Whenever you say, oh, I wonder what was happening in my past life. I wonder what was happening in my future life. The only reason you have that curiosity is because you're already connected to them. Understanding whenever you have that curiosity about another form of life, if you want, you can allow yourself to interpret that as a bridge automatically. You can say, oh, I wonder what I did in a past life, or oh, I wonder what plant consciousness wishes to tell me, or I wonder what it's like to be a bird, or I wonder what it's like to be a plant. Understanding that that curiosity is actually a bridge because you're connected to these things in more ways than you realize. The curiosity is a bridge to allow for you to begin to merge your consciousness with these other consciousnesses of life that you're curious about. And as you begin to explore other forms of life in this way, you will begin to amplify your repertoire of knowledge experience, as well as the ability to draw upon these sources of life you're curious about for wisdom and for guidance. And we wish for all of you to remember, this is a natural ability you all possess, and it's something you're all coming into. We would encourage you to all explore it in whatever way, shape, or form you feel inspired. We will now lead you through closing, through a blessing. We will be translating in that sense, a mantra, a prayer from our world. One moment, it will be in your English language so you can understand the fullness of its vibrations. One moment. <clears throat> The three suns that we perceive are part of the life which we all weave. Together, our life will always grow to the regions of space together we know. The heart inside will always glow, revealing my truth that I always show. My beating heart, my breathing lungs, I speak my truth from the tip of my tongue. Love to you and love to all. We are here together. We have already resolved. All things inhibiting growth. And to a new self, we give our oath. The love of creation ripples through. From me to you, we are shining too. We thank you for this interaction. <laughs> Thank you all for your infinite awareness, your unique consciousness. Our unconditional love to each of you on your life path and to all whom you encounter on the sacred walk of life. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It was really lovely today. Did we lose him? Where did he go? No, I'm here. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you so much. It was amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for putting up with my technical difficulties. I appreciate that tremendously, too. All right. Um, thank you very much. So um, we will, um, we, we, because there's people that would like to get in touch with you, uh, please, if you can give how to get in touch with you and you can... Um, then they can maybe contact you for a reading or something like that. Yeah, sure thing. So um, you can find me on YouTube if you want to see more videos, and that's Health Thy Self. And you can just type in Tyler Ellison right after that in the search bar, and that'll bring you to my video archive, right? I probably have like 60 videos, um, probably about 30 of them. Maybe, I don't know, I might be exaggerating. I have a lot of content there. If you want to see more free transmissions, 
And if you want to reach out for sessions, because we can channel the Sasani, we can talk to a Ryok again, we can talk to other beings, feel free to email me at uh, my email, which I'll spell out. It's T-E-L-L-I-S-O-N-7-0-0 at gmail.com. And that is uh, pronounced just Telesin, Telesin700 at gmail.com. You can contact me there for sessions, and I'm happy to do them. I also teach. I can also teach you uh, how to channel, um, how to do energy healings. I mean, how to do really amazing stuff. So if you also want to learn more esoteric skills as well, I also teach this. Um, and I can teach, you know, master level self-healing, master level self-cultivation. So if you're, any of you are interested in that, um, I also offer this as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, for the people in the chat that are complaining that they didn't uh, uh, get their question answered, you can ask your question next week. Some of the questions I didn't see because I didn't come into the chat until after we started. So if the question was already there, I might have missed it. So sometimes you'll need to, uh, to place your question again, but we try to give uh, everybody a chance to ask their questions. So thank you so much for asking them and yeah, much love to you guys. Um, we'll see you. We'll see you next week. Next week we'll be uh, broadcasting from the Ascension Workshop and live from uh, Rochester, New York. It'll be back with uh, Jim on the twelfth. Is that right? Yeah, the twelfth of. Is that right? I don't know. Ninth. Tenth. Tenth or the eleventh. Whatever next Saturday is, <laughs> we'll be broadcasting from there. So much love to everyone. Thank you so much, Tyler. That was amazing. Um, really incredible. Thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. Thanks for having me back. Y'all Y'all are amazing. This is the coolest way to spend Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, you're welcome back again and again and again. So thank you.